Today we got our first look and sound at the future of IndyCar racing, 2024 to be exact, and the new engines that will be running at that time. Both Honda and Chevy testing at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway today, and it has to be said that the look and sound is very similar to how it is now. We've got the pictures, we've got the sound, we've got the analysis, let's get into it. And this coverage of IndyCar testing is brought to you by HelloFresh. HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit for a reason. You get delicious meals that are fun to make, delivered right to your door. And in today's hectic world, getting a home-cooked meal on the table every day is an accomplishment worth celebrating. And celebration never tasted this good. HelloFresh has more five-star reviews than any other meal kit. And you know we like things that are fast on this channel. That's why HelloFresh offers a wide variety of quick and easy recipes, including 20-minute meals, easy cleanup, and low prep options. Go to HelloFresh.com and use the code LAND16 for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. That's HelloFresh.com and use the code LAND16 for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. So, welcome back to the Land Castle. So, today at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the 2024 IndyCar engine formula got its first on-track uh, testing. Now, this engine formula, which is going up from the current 2.2-liter V6 turbocharged power plants, uh, these engines that we're testing today will be, or are, 2.4-liter turbocharged V6s. The difference between the two engines, or the major difference, will be the hybridization. Now, these engines today were not hybrid-powered, though it stands to reason that there was you know, more or less about 200 pounds of ballast added to these cars that we're testing today uh, to simulate what a car will react like with a hybrid system installed in it. But today was just a test of the internal combustion uh, 2.4 liter V6. There were two teams testing today. Team Penske was testing the Ilmore Engineering uh, Chevrolet engine. Joseph Newgarden was doing the driving duties. And Chip Ganassi Racing was running a Honda-owned Dallara DW12 chassis powered by the HPD-built Honda ND uh, engine. Um, now, before I talk too much more about this particular test, I want you guys to listen to, to the sound of these engines, because uh, at least to my ear, 99% of people are not going to be able to tell a difference. There was a difference in the sound, the pitch of the engines, but it's very subtle. So here's the footage. And let me get on my soapbox real quick. You guys have now heard the engines, and like I said, to 99% of people, they're not going to be able to tell that IndyCar has a different engine, at least from the audio uh, sound. It's just, it, they sound too similar. Um, and it, again, kind of 
keeps me going back to the what's so wrong with the current engines? Why do we have to change them? I get it. Hybrids, right? That technology that World Endurance Championship had in 2012 and Formula One had in 2009. I don't know. Um, So today uh, was interesting because you had two cars testing and we really didn't think that there was really going to be any testing today. Temperatures were very, very cold. It really never broke 40 degrees. There was really, it was around 35 to 37 degrees air temperature today. Now, typically, um, IndyCar does not run in temperatures that low, air temperatures that low. Um, because Firestone requires, um, uh, I think it's 100 degrees of combined air and track temperature. However, because of the fact that it was a nice sunny day today, it seems like the track temperature actually came up to the point where it was safe to run, even though the air temperature uh, was fairly low. They'll also be testing tomorrow, by the way, but again, it's going to be a very cold day, and it'll be you know totally open if you want, well, not totally open, but if you want to come to the museum, check it out, listen for yourself, and decide for yourself uh, what you think of these engines thus far. Um, they'll be testing tomorrow. Um, But it'll be similar conditions where it's very, very cold. And because of that, you would think that even if it's, even if they're letting them go run, they're not going to be running very hard, right? That was not the case, particularly for the Ilmore Chevy engine. That car, uh, in the hands of Joseph Newgarden, run by Team Penske, really was pounding the pavement and really seemed to be going quite quick. Uh, throughout the day. Uh, Long runs too. I mean, five, six, seven laps at a time, uh, really putting the engine through its paces. The Honda, on the other hand, that was interesting because the Honda would go out, it would do obviously the out lap, it would do one hot lap, and then it would go straight in the pits. So typically the Honda was only doing about, you know, one hot lap at a time. Now, towards the end of the day, the Chevy and the Honda were both out on the circuit at the same time, though they were on opposite ends of the speedway. There was no point where these cars got anywhere close to each other. In fact, most of the day, they were just taking turns. The Chevy would go out, and then the Honda would go out, and then the Chevy would go out, and then the Honda would go out. Um, And that was the longest stint that I personally saw that the Honda ran all day. Um, So I think it was probably like three to five laps. It wasn't like the engines were blowing up, and certainly when you're talking about testing, everybody's got a different testing program, right? And and they're certainly not letting the media back there to go see what's what they're working on or what they're doing. And I'm sure that the Honda and Chevy programs were very, very separated on pit lane. I would not be surprised if the Honda was down on one end and the Chevy was down on the other end, specifically because, again, this is brand, well, not brand new, but this is you know, new propi- proprietary technology. And this is technology that's, you know, potentially going to be used if, you know, the modern IndyCar way of doing things is the standard, you know, 10, 12, 13 years down the line, as much as I cringe to say that, um, that's the way of the world now. And so certainly Honda and Chevy are going to play things as close to the vest as long as they can, because, not only are you potentially racing against the car or the engines that were there today, but let's say a Toyota joins in the next couple of years, or maybe another manufacturer. You wouldn't want a team or a manufacturer that maybe want to come into this thing, look at your 2.4 liter IndyCar engine, and uh, kind of look at it and go, "Hmm, I wonder if that would work. Let's try that on our engine." Things like that. So this this sort of testing is going to be pretty secretive for a pretty long time, but again. You know, as, for from a fan perspective, it's very similar. It's 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 very similar technology too. At the same time, you know, the engines aren't really making a massive leap forward. The hybrid certainly will be a, a leap forward for IndyCar and their standards. But even like I said in this video, this, those standards are, you know, in some ways well behind the time. So. Um, I think a new chassis will hopefully generate a lot more interest. Um, hopefully that will look at least a little bit different, you know, maybe a little, maybe not totally copying the, the new Formula One cars, but kind of having that same flavor where you really get, uh, you know, young fans kind of interested and, uh, you know, changing things up just a little bit. <laughs> so yeah, that's day one at testing. There's uh, testing tomorrow. I don't know if I'll have a report on it because frankly, 
if you can't be over there and talk to the people involved, you, you pretty much just have the visuals of what the engines sound like. That's in this video. Um, unless somebody blows something up or crashes tomorrow. But again, that you know, the chances of catching that on video are like slim to none, and Slim just left the building. There's also a 20-car modern IndyCar test on uh, Wednesday. It's supposed to rain, but it looks like uh, there will be at least some testing time on that day. So that's going to be another uh, day, and I think I will actually have a report on that because it at least have something to do with the road races coming up, particularly uh, the Grand Prix of Indianapolis. So thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube. Let me know what you think of the IndyCar 2024 engine down in the comments section below, and we'll see you in the next video.